And for those who are in attendance of this event, I also want to thank you so much uh, for coming. And for those of, those of you all who are um, currently working out in the field, doing, uh, doing work in this field, I also wanna thank you for your work. Um, part of what I'm doing is uh, the research aspect of looking at inclusion. And this particular project that I'll be presenting today is an assessment of the degree to which cities are inclusive in Florida. What I will be presenting today is kind of a lot, so I want to get through all of it, but I also want to make sure there's time um, at the end if there's any questions. The first part of the work looks at um, it looks at whether it, it, it presents the work of the first part of the project, which looks at the degree to which cities in Florida are inclusive. But then the second part of the project presents the immigrant perspective and how they feel that Florida is inclusive. Okay. Um, now I have a poll that I'm gonna ask you all. Looks like there's a poll. Okay, there's a poll. Um, you can complete the poll that was just um, put inside of the Zoom link. Um, the questions that I will be answering in this first section, which is the city perspective, is to what degree are cities in Florida inclusive towards immigrants? Do levels of, of immigrant inclusion vary based upon city population size? Are local governments more inclusive in cities with higher levels of foreign-born and Hispanic populations? So combine these questions um, provides a snapshot on the degree to which cities in Florida are inclusive. But before I get started, I want to define what is inclusion. I spent a great deal of time in my previous presentation defining it, but I'll just say it in one sentence here that I'm using inclusion here to refer to the degree to which immigrants are included in a particular setting. Essentially, inclusion is multifaceted. It has, there's different types of inclusion. And also it's, it exists at, at different levels. There's individual level inclusion in terms of how immigrants feel that they are included. And then there's micro, micro and meso level of um, aspects of inclusion, wherein we look at what the city, for example, is doing to promote inclusion. Um, and another aspect that uh, encapsulate this definition is that when we think about measuring inclusion, um, there is also a need to um, look at how, when we think about measuring inclusion in a city, we, we in this study, we consider multiple entities in the city and what they're doing. So not just what the local government is doing, but also what residents are doing, what uh, different actors in the city are doing to promote the overall feeling of inclusion in the city. So the empirical approach that I take here to answer those three questions is that I develop a scale. And this scale takes into account man many variables that represent inclusion. For example, it looks at whether the city has an office or a commission or of immigrant affairs, does it have a legal defense fund, etc. And you can see here that this these colors are associated with, um, I use this color scheme to kind of illustrate um, the, uh, to, to illustrate inclusion. And you can see that it's on a scale between zero to nine, which also represent inclusion. Zero, very low level of inclusion, and nine is very high. The sample frame that I use is 412 incorporated cities in Florida. Um, I use census data. I use also I employ proportionate stratified random sampling, um, and this approach was appropriate given that I expected that degrees of inclusion would vary based upon population. And um, my sample size is 103. So I looked at 103 cities in Florida out of um, 412, which is representative of the population. I'm going to ask you all now to um, participate in the audience opinion, and I believe um, we have here in the chat a poll. So I would like to ask you all on a scale zero to nine, how inclusive is Florida? 
zero represents uh, low inclusion and nine represents very high. And is there a way, panelists, is there a way, Terrence, um, is there a way we can see that, that result? Okay, so looks like um, folks, oh, folks are still doing it, so we'll wait. Okay. It looks like we can kind of stop there. Um, looks like uh, most folks um, rated medium, kind of medium five. It's the highest score. So most, so it looks like most folks believe five. So that's about medium range. Um, Okay, we'll keep it going. All right, so I can I get permission now to share my screen? Thank you. Looks like most folks think it's pretty inclusive, or at least average. Well, Actually, according to the study, um, Florida is exclusive, and uh, meaning there is, an, uh, on average, um, the average city in Florida, um, and we're only looking at incorporated cities here, um, exhibit low degrees of inclusion. The um, estimated level of inclusion is 0.75 to 1.25 for all incorporated cities translating to very low to low levels of inclusion on a nine point scale. And um, also the level of inclusion for governments is low, is even lower. Um, it's less than one, it's between 0.32 and 0.68. And I'm 95% confident that these estimates are correct. So here's a visual. Um, you can see in this visual that so gray represents in, in the scores between one to 1.9. And as you can see in this visual that most cities in Florida have um, a score of um, of between one to 1.9. Now, Somebody, some folks might want to actually have access to this, so I'm going to just share it in the in the chat box, and you can see that, for example, um, let's just say, let's just, I'm just going to throw out a few cities. Uh, don't have access to the map. Oh no, okay. So if you want access to the map, you can email me at zetasm at uci.edu and I'll send you the link um, or maybe we can send it afterwards. I'm just gonna give us a few, a few example of cities. So for example, Aventura has a score of five. Bonita Springs has a score of 2.7. We have Miami Beach has a score of 6.7. Palm Springs also has a pretty high score of six. So, okay. So I'm gonna just continue on with the presentation. Now, do levels of inclusion vary based upon population size? So basically that's the first research question that I'm gonna provide the results to. 
The answer is yes. Um, levels of inclusion vary based upon population size. Um, whereby the higher the population size, the more inclusive the city will be. In addition, local governments with sizable populations also tend to be more inclusive towards immigrants. So here's a visual. You can see that cities with population size over one, uh, 1499, have very low level of inclusion of less than one. But as you in see increase in the city population size, it increases also the inclusion score. So cities with like 1500 to 599, uh, 5,999 have an inclusion score that is slightly higher than cities with um, uh, 4, uh, 1499. Um, and then you look also at cities that has a population between fi uh, uh, 50K to, nine, uh, to nine, 99,999 uh, has score of three, but that's still low actually. Um, but it's higher than smaller cities. And the other thing I want to mention is that half the cities in Florida actually have uh, um, uh, half the cities in Florida have a um, population size of uh, 6,000. So actually, Florida is quite rural. Um, only I think 20 cities have a population size of uh, over 100K. Um, so we can think of Florida being, on average, um, very, very small, a lot of small towns, a lot of these small towns are, um, have low degrees of inclusion. Um, okay. So comment, uh, panel, I'm wondering if the data is co-founded by the fact that immigrants cluster and so Miami Beach may be inclusive towards the immigrants that go there, but less inclusive towards other kinds. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So we may see that um, the fact that there are more immigrants in a particular community does, in fact, yes, denote higher levels of inclusion in one in one regard. Um, but it could be that the city is exclusive in other regards. Exactly. And that's because there is inclusion that exists on different um, dimensions. So it might be inclusive in terms of the residents there being mainly um, of uh, immigrant background, but it might not be inclusive to, in terms of like the local government outputs. So the median inclusion score for city government. So we look at inclusion, I just show inclusion in terms of overall inclusion, but I want to now talk about city governments. So we can also see here that um, Governments in Florida, local city governments, actually also are more inclusive when the population um, is dependent upon the population size. So you can see that with the local government, it's more likely to be inclusive when there are more people in the city and in the community. Um, you can see in this chart, for example, Basically, if you're a city in Florida with less than 6,000 people, you're exclusive. Bottom line, there's like not a lot of degrees of inclusion. Um, yeah. And the results, um, this is the second, um, the second uh, study that I'm going to present. Um, this question presents the results of the following question. Are local governments more inclusive in cities with higher levels of foreign born populations? Um, the answer is uh, yes, actually, um, local governments do tend to be include more inclusive when there are more people in the populace that are um, a foreign born relative to the population median. Um, but this level of inclusion is still exclusive. So even though you have cities in Florida where you have a lot of folks coming from different places, still on average, the government is exclusive. Here's a, an illustration. Um, cities with a sizable foreign-born population relative to the foreign-born uh, population median have an estimated inclusion score of about 1.8. So that's baseline. Um, or no, that's not baseline. That's when you have a city where there's more foreign born individuals relative to the state average, you see a score of 1.8. But um, if you have cities that are below average of foreign born um, ratio, 
the score is about 0 0.08. So, and these scores are statistically significant. But as you can see, if we were to put this on the scale, uh, zero to nine, it's still exclusive, it's still very low. So you see a slight, you see that local governments are more inclined to be inclusive when you have individuals, you have um, the, the population have a higher ratio of immigrants. So the set third question I'm going to present is, um, are local governments more inclusive in cities with higher levels of Hispanic populations? The answer is no. Um, there is no difference between how governments, uh, their, their outputs in terms of inclusion when there are higher or lower um, ratios of Hispanics in the population. And uh, you see the two differences in the scores, 1.6 and 0.93, but these are not statistically significant. So there is essentially no difference between the two groups. I do want to let you all know some limitations to my research. Um, essentially, this is not generalizable outside of the state of Florida. And it's also not generalizable to cities that are not incorporated. It, it only is applicable to cities that are incorporated. Also, this study is limited to data that was collected between December to May. Um, lots of stuff has happened since then, um, but essentially these scores are, I mean, there is always going to be deviations, um, but nothing too draconian, nothing too like big of a leap um, in terms of the scores, but they are limited to a particular time. And, but essentially the scores still provide critical information that can be used for um, policy and practice. I want to move us to a different direction to look at the immigrant perspective. So I just provided information on the city perspective and the degree to which the city is inclusive. But I want to move now to what immigrants think. Do they think that Florida is inclusive? So the three research questions I pose with regard to this topic is number one, to what degree do Floridians uh, from immigrant background feel included in their community? How do Floridians uh, from immigrant backgrounds perceive immigrant relations currently and uh, what do they predict for the future? What are the most critical challenges that Flor Florida is facing today? So how I answer these three questions empirically is as such. So I draw upon the Four Together survey that was developed and implemented by Weavetails and their partners. It consists of 86 questions in seven languages. And there's a combination of different question types, such as scale-based questions, ranking, and qualitative questions. And it was implemented on SurveyMonkey between June 2020 to February 2021. The target population for this survey are individuals of immigrant background, uh, or essentially which are first, second generation immigrants residing in Florida. And the recruitment strategy was uh, to recruit folks with purposeful and convenient sampling. And I um, analyzed 188 observations in this sample. So this is what the results say from the Fort Together survey. The first research question is, to what degree do Floridians of immigrant background feel included in their community? Well, on average, the respondents felt that immigrant inclusion relations in Florida is somewhat inclusive. Um, the score was 5.5 on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 denoting low inclusion, 10 denoting high inclusion. Um, but there's also variation across dimensions of inclusion. So if we look at this visual, you can see of the 188 participants, you see that they feel there is inclusion in terms of access to services, but not that inclusive in terms of rights, um, which actually reflects the other study. So that's 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 pretty um, that it, it, it provides validation that both samples reflect this finding um, or have this finding. Um, you see that Floridian, uh, the immigrants in the sample, the respondents felt public safety was good, but not so good when it comes to higher education and political inclusion. So in terms of how higher education being made available to undocumented persons and perceptions on whether a political leader represents the need of the immigrant community, um, that, that is still um, somewhat exclusive. Um, so you can see that on average, while the average score is 5.5, um, you can see that there's lower and higher scores across different dimensions of inclusion. Next question, how do Floridians of immigrant background perceive immigrant relations currently and what do they predict for the future? So a slight majority of respondents were optimistic about immigrant inclusion relations in Florida. 
This is suggested with the results of the survey questions number 80, 81, 82. We asked question about uh, well, how do you feel Florida is going to be 2020, 2030, 2040. And for 2020, 46% of the um, of the respondents uh, use adjective or identify adjectives that signify, significant, signified exclusion, such as hostility, unfriendly, control, strict, and press. So basically, folks feel that in 2020 was just a bad year um, in terms of immigrant inclusion. Um, but if you look at, uh, uh, um, uh, so, but for, but there were also actually, um, actually, no, I take that back. Looks like um, folks actually had higher uh, degrees of sentiments uh, in, with regard to inclusion over exclusion because folks elected adjectives that signify, signify inclusion, such as open, fair, and democratic. So there's more respondents that felt that 2020 was inclusive than exclusive. Okay, for 2020. Um, the next question is, what are the most critical challenges that Florida is facing today? So the survey reveals that there's many challenges. Um, of course, these challenges, um, uh, these, these, these challenges uh, vary across different dimensions. So here's an example. You see that civil, um, so let's look at civil. So some of the respondents felt that there could be an improvement in, 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 in immigrant political representation. Um, also, there could be improvement in uh, restoration of trust between the police and certain ethnic back, uh, racial groups. There's also a sentiment that there needs to be more access to housing access to scholarships for undocumented persons, more um, addressing of hate crimes. We need to look at health as well. Health, um, there's a need for access to affordable health care, access to medical care and workers. So all of these reflect um, more or less the 188 uh, respondents, how they feel included in terms of these aspects. So I want to discuss some limitations to this um, research. So number one, the findings are not really generalizable to the population of immigrants. So it's essentially limited to the 188 respondents in the survey. Um, it does not also provide su um, sufficient representations of individuals of temporary status, such as DACA or individuals who are illegalized. That has implications. So if you have a sample where most folks are citizens, well, their idea of, of inclusion is going to differ from a sample of individuals who are on the edge of being deported. So um, do know that these results reflect the opinions of mostly individuals who um, are legal, um, but they still, um, this, the results still uh, reflect um, a, an aspect of the, the voice of the immigrant community. Um, the, the findings are also limited to the um, the experiences of individuals in large incorporated cities with a population of over 100k, which, as in my previous presentation, um, these cities are actually more inclusive. So, if you're in an inclusive environment, of course, you're going to feel as though you're included. But um, if you're not in an inclusive environment, that may affect your perception. So. For the researchers watching this, uh, future research can look at the experiences of how immigrants, uh, their experiences in smaller towns, especially towns of less than 6,000. Um, in order, so this, this, this is um, something that, or no, not 6,000, but 23,000, um, because the, the experiences may vary because the, the degree of inclusion is um, lower in those cities. I would like to conclude with some uh, food for thought. Um, first, let me summarize. So this presentation found that in the aggregate, cities in Florida are exclusive towards immigrants. Um, 
levels of inclusion vary based upon population size. Further, the degree to which immigrants possibly vary based on the population size of the city and type of inclusion. Um, and, and so what does this mean? Like, what's the point? Okay, um, that, that's what um, my advisor and a lot of uh, my colleagues always ask, well, who cares? Um, well, who cares? Policymakers, folks who are immigrant rights activists, folks who are sitting down at the table trying to make some inclusive strategies for cities in Florida. Um, it's important to know, well, what is the starting point and what, how is Florida inclusive and how are cities currently doing? What is the state of inclusion in Florida? So having this information that is research-based can help to inform policy and practice. So here's an example. Um, when it comes to enacting policy recommendations, there is a need to consider that each city is different um, when it comes to the spectrum of inclusion. So essentially, if you have a, recommendations for cities over 100,000 needs to be different from cities that are with a population size of 6,000. There's the recommendations all together needs to um, vary based upon, um, or it needs to consider the fact that some um, cities are significantly more inclusive. So a, a, an evaluation plan um, for rural cities uh, would, would probably look much, much more different. So, um, for example, you might have a one recommendations for rural cities that looks at um, ways to promote cultural inclusion to begin with, but you might have a, an intervention for larger cities to um, to to promote uh, legal and rights inclusion. So, going towards getting that legal defense fund because they they probably already have a high level of inclusion on the cultural dimension. So we need to move away from that and go to the next step. How can we ensure rights and access? Um, but a rural city, um, you know, we, we start on the spectrum, right? Get folks to, to know that there are refugees in the community. Get folks to know that uh, these individuals do not pose threats to our community, that um, they have a culture that we can appreciate, that they have, we have value, um, uh, we bring value to the community. So, the interventions, the conversations can be different, of course, we know this, um, but this is just one idea. This is just one approach that we can take when it comes to um, providing recommendations to local government officials on making the community more inclusive. Um, essentially, there is no one size fits all. Um, any blanket approach I would think is very questionable. Um, essentially segmenting the approaches to consider the uniqueness of the cities um, is essentially a way to acknowledge that each city um, brings forth a, a you know a, diff a different um, different expression a different it's essentially a different different cup of tea and as practitioners and policymakers we can integrate this into our recommendations That concludes my presentation, and I would like to invite participants to take this uh, follow up survey. Uh, let us know your thoughts. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for listening to this presentation. And if you have any questions, you want that link for um, you know any of the links, uh, just feel free to email me.